Hi everyone, I'm Adipsha from Simple Crowdfunding and we're running a series of interviews with property professionals just to understand a little bit more from their standpoint in terms of what's happening in the marketplace. So today I'm joined by Cam Devedi, who is an investor developer with 29 years worth of property experience and he also runs a property education company called Premier Property. Thank you so much for joining us, Cam. Thank you for having me, Atuksha. Um, Cam, before we get started and talk about what's happening in the current environment and how it's affecting property, can you just tell everyone a little bit about who you are and about your journey in property, please? Who well, I am, I'm just a normal guy, uh, investing in property for over 29 years. And uh, when I started, I started back in 1989. To be fair, if I'm completely honest with you, back then, 29 years ago, I didn't know anything about property. And I just really fell in and it was a very challenging time like we have right now. Back in 1989, interest rates were, my mortgage interest rate, if I remember right, from Lees and Holbeck building site, it was 17%. I mean, wow. you know what rates we have right now, so it was nuts, yeah. <laughs> and um, if I'm completely honest with you, you know, I was two weeks away from re repossession and I didn't know what to do. And I just thought, you know what, why don't I just rent these rooms out room by room because everybody wants to rent out room by room. Um, mm -hmm. However, back then, landlords weren't doing that. And the aim of the game was to, by the end of the month, actually have enough money to pay the mortgage. Um, however, what I found was, to my surprise, that there was a nice pot of money left over at the end of each month. Mm -hmm. And it's really good. And I created a system for that. And I love creating systems. I love creating processes. And, you know, fast forward to today, you know, we do many different types of projects. Um, anything between 7 to 12 projects on a monthly basis, buy to lets, HMOs development um, and I also train good people on how to do it from a practical approach because that's what we are investors and developers and you can't help but to share if um, I believe you know if you're good at something and that's your subject then you know why just just for yourself and why just your family why not help others uh, in this as well and um, that's a really interesting approach and when we were speaking earlier this week you had a really interesting um, viewpoint with regards to what's currently happening within the property cycle marketplace. Now, you've actually been through a number of different property cycles, haven't you? And you were part of the 2008 but, uh, recession, but also um, before that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think you're talking about the conversation we we're having about the market cycle, um, hence we're doing this video. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I've been through the recession over three times in my life. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed about that is that um, the property market cycle from an investor's point of view, I'm not talking about an economist's point of view or an analyst's point of view. I'm just talking about from a common sense point of view in terms of what we see happening in the property market cycle. There <sighs> seems to be a pattern that happens every single time in exactly the same way. And the conversation that we were having was that, um, you know, actually what's happening is expected. Mm. However, there's always a different reason for it. So we know, you know, right now, unfortunately, it's a very sad case, isn't it? With this COVID, you know, 19, how, how many people are losing their lives? And, you know, very unfortunate. But if we, you know, put that to, you know, just we just con concentrate on the property side of things, um, what we're finding is um, it's, it's the same thing that's been happening back in 2008 and back in 1989 as well and there seems like i say this um this uh this 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 um pattern that that it follows and it's following this pattern uh right now so in this pattern and uh, we assess this at premier property that first of all um there are six parts to the market cycle we're not going to go into all of that right now i, I know um but in the sixth part sixth part of the market cycle there tends to be this little bit of gentle uplift after a little bit of a challenging time. So for example, you know, we can, we can assess right now we, where we had Brexit. So Brexit happened before Brexit, we know that there was some uncertainty. And then after Brexit, when we knew that, you know, a government was gonna be in and we know that, right, we know what the plan is um, and, and it was more confirmed. If you notice in the property market, you know, if you assess the data, if you have a look at ONS, if you have a look at land registry data, if you measure, you know, what, um, you know, good, um, good quality companies like HomeTrack are showing in terms of data. I like to work on facts. At Premier Property, we're all, always working from facts. 
we can notice that there was this gentle uplift in property prices. Um, mm -hmm. um, maybe you know, people listening in right now have um, had that um, happen for them as well in their area. And then what happens in this pattern, as I'm calling it, we find that something happens where there is a drastic change. There is an explosion of some type. Now, back in 2008, we know it was the banks, you know, not having any money. I mean, who would have thought that? And this time around, we absolutely have uh, this um, horrible, horrible, you know, disease, I'm going to call it, you know, this COVID-19, you know, affecting so many people's lives. Um, you know, quite tragic. But in terms of the property market pattern, that this, you know, from our view at Premier Property, seems to be the instigator that is now, you know, allowing the property market to head towards a downward spiral, which actually there is massive opportunity right now. So if you think about it, every time this recession happens, there tends to be an eight to 12 week period mm -hmm. when there is complete disillusion. People don't know what to do. There's a lot of scaremongering out there and the media is doing that quite well right now amongst the facts. You know, they're doing quite a lot, aren't they? Um, so, you know, people just, just don't know what to do. They're just stuck or some people just give up. But it's people like us, you know, people like all of us here, you know, watching this video because, you know, at the end of the day, if you're watching this video, you're, uh, I'm, I'm assessing that you're, you're looking to find a solution. You're looking to find ways to actually move forward. And really, you know, people like all of us here, you know, we have that proactive approach. And the first eight to 12 weeks are such great opportunity in property uh, like we're finding right now, um, you know, we're doing deals in lockdown and it happens and that 12 weeks where your competition have fallen away, you, you know, you have prices where people can understand why you're offering a discount. All of this, you know, is happening in this 12 weeks. After the 12 weeks, we are heading towards a recession. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with this particular recession, it's quite crystal clear, isn't it, that uh, you know, uh, GDP is falling. We, mm -hmm. we know that. However, formally, we can't be in a recession until... Uh, you know, may, we may or may not know that uh, it's a case of having two quarters of negative GDP, which is on its way, isn't it? So after that 12 week period, which we're going through right now, with this lockdown and all of that is massive opportunity. And then we have two quarters of great opportunity in property as prices begin to align and become more uh, stable and, and they become more, uh, how can I say, you know, we can take opportunity from that. Uh, then the recession will be announced after the two quarters because it needs to be two quarters of negative growth. So at that point, it will be formally uh, recognised that we're, we're in a recession. But the thing about property is um, it follows a pattern and everyone understands that UK property is really good. It's a great asset class to be investing in. And it's just having a system and a process which allows you to really take use of these um, massive opportunities. Although it doesn't feel too great out there. That's, that's, you know, that's for sure. You know, we can, however, we can feel great by taking control of all our lives. And in, in terms of property, you make money from that and have a better, better life. You know, that's, um, that's my perspective from this pattern that I find. No, and that's incredibly insightful. So um, one of the things that we were talking about before was about um, the 2008 recession uh, or the downturn. That was actually a huge opportunity for you, wasn't it? Which you weren't able to embrace in um, '89, but as a result of it, you then worked up to get yourself into a better position in case it happened again. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, to be fair, Atuksha, um, I was looking for people that uh, could help, could uh, who knew the who had the information. Mm -hmm. But what I found back then was there weren't people that really wanted to share. Um, and if anybody did share anything, they didn't want to share, you know, wholeheartedly and openly on what the actual process is. Because mm -hmm. really, when you think about it, it's you know, what I like to do is, you know, use other people's experience with their permission, you know, get the process, get the system and, and really fast track uh, what mm -hmm. you're doing. Unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury. That's my reason or that's my excuse back in 1989. Because if I knew what I know now, we would have done things so much faster. But I, I had to build those systems at Premier Property for ourselves. You know, that took time. But mm -hmm. in that time, yes, I did become financially free. And financial freedom, to be fair, I mean, what is that? You know, um, I would say the first stage of that is replacing your current income, whatever that is, whether you're PAY or whether you're in business. I'm not saying you have to give up your job or you have to give up your business. All I'm saying is that, you know, 
you know, you can get to a stage like I did, where you had enough income to replace what you was currently doing. Now, and that's for me, true. income through property, isn't it? Yeah, income through property. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it, to be fair, it didn't take take a lot really once we have a cookie cutter system in place mm. to actually do that. Um, and well, you know, I remember was it? I was 25 when I, I think the first time I got financially free because um, I've never really had a proper job. I'm a little bit naive and I just do things. Um, I like to keep that gentle naivety because it keeps the doors open as a professional yeah. property investor. Um, so, um, yeah, but at the age of 25, I, at the top of my head, we, I think I had four or five HMOs at that time. And that was about four or five K income coming in on a monthly basis, which you know, for most people, um, for me certainly at that time, was enough uh, money that you need to be replacing an income. So these are things that, of course, um, I share with other people, easy ways of actually moving forward. And right now is... I strongly believe a golden opportunity that's not going to come along for the next decade, probably eight to 10 years. We're not going to see the same situation in terms of where we are in property right now. Um, and I, I really feel it's strong, a strong solution. Back then, I couldn't find the people. No one really wanted to share. Um, right now, it's, it's a different perspective. And, and through the education programs that you run, you do share a lot of your different property strategies and you tailor them to what's currently relevant in the marketplace, don't you? Well, many people say that we're very real. You know, uh, people that train with us, they say, you know, I share current information. See, the, the fact is, all, all I'm sharing is what I would want, want to be hearing about, you know, and that is what we are doing at Premier Property currently. So, mm -hmm. uh, like what I say, we're active investors and developers not just 12 years ago, we're actually investor developers right now. Um, even in the, in the lockdown, we've done four deals on desktop where you know, we've generated 131,000 pounds of discounted deals, four deals. Now, I'm not saying that to impress you, but you know, really to impress upon you that it's quite cool you know, when you have a system and a process that you, you can just, just follow and it's the way it works. Yes, we adapt, you know, you gotta adapt and that's what we're doing right now. And all I share with people is, like I say, what we are exactly doing right now. That way, you know that the information is genuine. That way, you know, we know that the information that's being shared is working because there's proof of it. And that's, that's what I do. Just because, you know, I train people, you know, I don't, on my business, I don't make money really. For, my foremost business isn't training people. Our foremost business is investing in developers. And to be fair, we make more money investing in developing than we ever do in education. Although I love doing it, to be fair, and I wrap and package in different ways. Uh, I don't know, it's just the way some people are built, right? So I just love sharing on what is actually working right now. And people do say and make comments like this, very inspiring. Um, it's changed so many people's lives for the better in terms of their finances. Um, it makes me feel good as well. If I'm completely honest. Well, that's true, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? If you see other people succeeding alongside you, that's always a wonderful position to be in, isn't it? So, yeah, it's very exciting. It's a bit of a driver as well. You know, it keeps you driving yeah. you because it means that you you've got to get it right yourself, right? So if you're gonna you know, if we're gonna share information with other people on how to do things like this, um, you know, you've got to get it right yourself. So yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, so tell me about so because I know you run a number of um, events up and down the country. COVID has has obviously affected that. But tell me how else COVID has affected your business and what you've done to accommodate for still being able to continue. Mm. Okay, so first, I think the first point you're mentioning is the uh, Premier Property Clubs, uh, which we have six go-to hubs, uh, you know, a physical event, which of course right now they're not happening. Mm. So uh, what we've done is we've just paused that for the moment. To be fair, that's a lot of fun. It's really good networking and people love them. And they'll be back, you know, as lockdown passes, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. In terms of our, you know, real property business, what we're finding is, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is that, um, you know, 88% of our deals come from estate agents. So that's a quite large percentage of deals coming from estate agents. Now, right now, what we're finding is that estate agents, they, they are typically in three specific categories. Mm -hmm. So the first category we're finding with estate agents is basically they've just given up. Um, they've got their, how can I say it politely, you know, they, they've got their head stuck in the sand. It's not their fault. It's just the media. I mean, the more you look at your phone, isn't it? The more you look at that media, what they're, what they're saying. I mean, 
you know, I tend not to look at that more than once a day, just want to get the facts and knowing what's going on. Because the more you look at it, the more drastic it is, isn't it? It's so sad. Of course, you know, how we yeah. can on that. And it's quite uh, negative. So, uh, you know, personally, I want to keep away from that. Maybe you listening, you want to keep away from negativity. So, uh, well, my point is that um, there are agents where, unfortunately, the media has instigated, I believe, um, the fact that they've just given up they don't see a solution, it's not their fault, they haven't got any support or guidance, they haven't got people where they can be positive, but not just positive, cloud cuckoo positive, if I can say that, uh, <laughs> practically positive, you know, where they've got real solutions, you know, so they just haven't got those people, so they've just, they've just given up, unfortunately, that's the first camp. The second camp of estate agents we're finding are estate agents where they're maintaining their businesses, so what I'm talking about is, um, you know, the owner occupiers, that um, you know are managing they're mm. using the you know actually I, I really believe the government have really helped my personal view is with all the things that they put in place i know the funding's coming through and so on but there's so many different things that people can get some help from mm. and um, you know they those um, those estate agents are using those um, uh, help from the government if you're following what i'm saying and also what they're doing is they are maintaining their business so what that means is uh, they have their their staff they've furloughed some people they've kept some of the key staff you know that might just be two or three members you know it doesn't have to be a lot of people for them right so there's that and they are maintaining the business by either phone or by email um, and they are uh, doing viewings but they are doing virtual viewings so not physical viewings uh, you know, we've all heard about 360 viewings which you can have a look at um, and assess the property in that way so that's what they're doing they're, they're maintaining their business so that's the second camera now, the third camp, camp is the one that I love, the third category, and they are people like us. Basically, they just won't take no for an answer. They are, you know, they, they are concerned. They're not foolish. They know that there are uncertainties out there, but what they're doing is that, you know, we are finding solutions. So these estate agents are very proactive. They love what they do. They love working with their customers. They want to grow their business, and they are finding every opportunity right now that they can find. So this is the this is the um, the camp I'm calling it the you know the 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 the, the specific sort of type of people that uh, you know we're working with at Premier Property and of course you can work with. So let me explain uh, what what these estate agents are. So these estate agents typically will be uh, uh, owner occupiers. So the owner occupier, the CEO, the founder, the company director, you know their office is an extension of their home. They see their office as their home. It's just another room for them. Um, and, and they are popping in. Yes, of course, they're fighting by the rules or regulation of the land, you know, so they are self-isolating. There isn't anybody else in the office. And what they're doing is they're popping in at certain times, making sure that they've been proactive, doing their you know, daily tasks and finding opportunities within that. They've got staff that they've um, you know, got um, on the phone or you know, by email and uh, you know, these kind of things, you know, web webinars and video calls and all of this going on technology. They're using mm -hmm. technology carry on they are doing viewings um, virtually now the reality of what we're finding and i'm just sharing with you what we're finding is they are also doing physical viewings so you know these four deals that we've done mm -hmm. out of those two of those deals were done on desktop and two of those deals were actually done by physically viewing so the way they're doing that is they're still keeping within the rules so they typically leave the, the keys at the front of the door on an empty property so we're talking about empty properties and they sit in the car, they let you do the viewing, and that's fine, and then they come back and pick the keys up, and there you have it, you have your viewing done. So, you know, they, this is happening. You know, there, there are proactive people like that who are working like this right now. So they're the agents that we're working with, and we're finding that you can get really good deals. Now, one of the things that is helping is that there aren't out there many investors that are even thinking like this, and, and because of that, you, know, you have much more opportunity. Now, the vendors that really want to sell, they've got their properties up for sale and they want to sell the property. You're coming along, you're offering a fair figure, uh, which is a discounted value, taking in the fact that we talk about the market cycle, taking any discounts that might happen. So factoring in that and just making offers, you know, making offers with these proactive people, what you'll find is that you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm not saying every single one is going to be accepted, but within that, we're not looking for every single one. We're looking for that you know, premier property. We're looking for the ones that really work for you and the ones where, you know, your vendor, uh, the owner you know, the other property and the agent and yourself can actually accept and marry in and offer to be sale agreed so we are getting sales agreed right now that's great
and then um that's that's quite interesting because i know some people have just stopped doing viewings um others are sort of moving to they will go in and and do a walking video tour for example of the property and i do know some who are still sort of leaving the, the keys on the doorstep and waiting outside um whilst you go and have a look and actually in fact we're in the process of selling a property as well and the same procedures are applying so things are still moving um i know from a development standpoint you also have sites how has covid19 affected working on sites for you um so from a, a people standpoint people being on site from a supply chain standpoint what are the effects to the business in that regard yeah very interesting question Atisha. so we've actually got four developments uh four developments and conversions going on right now and mm -hmm. um, all in different stages actually which is quite interesting isn't it to sort of have the different stages so one of them is actually in london so that's a Four hundred fifty thousand pound purchase price uh, project, which mm -hmm. we're developing into a two point nine million pound project. That one is actually going through planning. Uh, to be fair, that's going through planning for the second time because we asked for just a little bit too, too you know, a bit much, a bit more. <laughs> so always a great way to start with. You know? so, of course, yeah. You know? And then work down. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into whole training about developments right now, so, but um, you know, So we're finding with that, that's going through the planning process, and the good news is that planning is working as as normal which i was quite surprised by because i thought that would be quite sluggish with, uh, with other things i'm going to mention in a moment but it, is, it isn't you know at premier property what we're finding is um the planning department is working at, at, as a normal pace hmm. and it, of course they are working from home um yeah and we are in contact with the the planners um, we've had an acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgement from them surprisingly very early normally the acknowledgement comes in three to four weeks later um but they actually acknowledged um uh, straight after our pre-application and, and as the application went in they acknowledged uh, literally in, in, in 48 hours which is very surprising so what i'm finding they, they are they are more attentive actually right now to their projects i don't know why that is i don't know if that's them working from home i mean i, I don't know if that's um them being more focused i don't know if that's like a human thing or, or whatever reason but it, it's touch wood so far um it seems to be working as it should be in the right time frame mm. Planning projects. Um, so, if I talk about uh, our other development, so this is a development where it's already got planning. So, it's 10 units, nine residential, uh, one bedroom flats, and two bedroom flats, and one commercial unit. So, it's a 10, okay. 10 unit uh, project in Kent. Now, with this one, um, we did a, a creative strategy. We have lots of hacks on how to do with estate agents at Premier Property. We have lots of hacks on how to get deals done and how you can do deals with no money in and you know all these different methods. Uh, slightly creative on the right side of creative so this particular deal is a is a creative deal so it's actually already got planning for the 10 units mm -hmm. and what we negotiate there is an ex exchange with a delayed completion right so we changed on it um, but we have a, a delayed completion and uh, yeah so um, i mean there's a lot to that deal actually how we structured it very easy very simple very exciting but um what what we're you know, talking about COVID nineteen? The challenge there is even though we had delayed it, um, the exchange happened before COVID nineteen happened. So obviously we're in a situation where we've we've exchanged, so we've got to complete because of course it's a legally binding contract. However, that time frame that we had, which was three months, uh, which means that we need to complete by the end of May, um, now uh, that has to be extended. So mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're going back to the landlord we're explaining the situation and the great thing is you know everybody understands they, they understand that you're being truthful you're not just you know you're not just you know, buying time you know you, what you're what you're sharing is honesty because they know what's going on out there you know course, so yeah. and it, it's about having an honest conversation with the vet, with the owner so you know, the honest conversation um that, that we're having is you know literally need some more time um because of what's going on because finance you know finance is still available but certain finance lines have have actually been um, withdrawn i mean mm -hmm. on this one we're actually working with you so i'm quite confident that we're going to get that through but um even as you said last week uh, we just need uh what did you say we need a bit more a longer runway longer runway you said that's yeah so <laughs> i like that <laughs> being an aviator it has to be that right <laughs> 
So we, we need a longer runway. We just need more, some more time. So that's the conversation that you can have with vendors. And actually that's conversations I've been having with vendors where we had exchanged and were complete, you know, are gonna complete and COVID-19 here. So it's, it's amazing actually, when you can um, uh, actually speak to people and you, know, you think, oh, they, they probably won't accept that, but it's just a case of asking. I mean, um, out of um, the deals that we've done, two of them, we spoke, we had to extend the timeline. This is the third, the third one, we went the third one. So first, the first one, um, I said to the solicitor, um, can you just ask? He said, we're very, very highly, highly unlikely they're gonna accept that. I said, could you please just ask for, on our behalf? Can we just have another month? Because it was, it was a bite let, so it was a small project. Um, mm -hmm. And he said, um, so we asked, and you know, the, you know, the, the, the vendor, the buyer on the, the seller on the other side was absolutely fine with that. They said, yeah, okay, we'll give you a month. And it's quite nice. I mean, you know, you just got to ask some people and they'll accept, you know, there are amicable people out, out there. There are amicable people that will actually work with you is what I'm noticing. So that was one of them. Um, another one, uh, how we did it, you know, the exchange and delayed uh, completion. Um, again, asked for some more time. We asked for six weeks and they said, um, you can have the six weeks provided you pay another 500 pounds. So, okay, we paid them 500 pounds. You know, didn't exactly. really argue the case that. Um, and we got six weeks. So we got that one through uh, over the line as well. And same thing with these developments. What we'll be asking for is we'll be asking for another three months. And let's see what happens. So in, in those situations, would you say that having the right relationships in place is really important and building relationships? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that my mum in early age uh, put into my head is that um, it doesn't matter who you are, because I, I come from a poor background, um, that luck does change. And I just think, what, did you, what do you mean by that, mum? You know, luck, your luck does change, and um, absolutely it does. I mean, I could never imagine that, uh, with God's grace, I'm allowed to say that, that we'll be in a situation where you know, there is lots of passive income, you know, family are financially free, and I'm in a position to actually really help people you know who studied much more than me you know uh, nurses i mean the amount of uh, people have helped um, to become financially free and create pensions nurses doctors you know people working in banks you know you, it consultants so many people just normal people and you know it really um how can i say it? it's uh, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it so my point is that your luck you know whatever it is can change now that can go both ways right someone who's rich can become very poor very quickly. Someone who's very poor can become very rich. Well, someone very rich can become very poor quickly because they haven't got the finger on the pulse. They're standing still and they're not being proactive. Simple as. And mm. you know, let's be honest, you know, in property, you're gonna lose money if you haven't got the right, the correct current steps of what you need to do right now. And if you're not assessing the opportunities, you're losing money anyway because you're moving backwards. Yeah. So yeah, people will lose their wealth. And at the same time, people who want to create their wealth also have the opportunity of doing that as well. So what my mum taught me at a very early age was speak to people how you would like to be spoken to and treat people how you would like to be treated. So I, I kept that one, um, even in our negotiations, whoever we're dealing with. So like the seller, for example, the seller, you know, we discussed what he wanted. We had a whole negotiation with them. I basically got him to a, to a stage where, you know, we, we found a match. So the seller is getting what he wants and we're getting what we want. And then we always tend to give them just that bit more in different ways. I'll explain what I mean. For example, in this case, um, they wanted us to actually take over the building at exchange and mm -hmm. take responsibility for it. So actually that's a, a, a good one um, because we would, we would like that anyway, but they, they wanted that, that was one of the requirements. And I said, yeah, okay, if I can help you with that, we'll do that. So just by that, you know, that amicable conversation, mm -hmm. um, state agents, whether that's uh, your tenants, whether that's people who you look at them and you think, oh, they haven't got any money, but you know what? I speak to them in the same way. And people with a, with a lot of money or a lot of projects, I speak to them in the, in the same way. Same way meaning just honoring people. And um, what I find is, you know, this, there isn't an agenda for that because my mom taught me this, but um, what you find is when you need help or when you need to negotiate, you've got amicable people most of the time where they'll actually listen to you. Um, yeah. Just the way of doing business, just, just my perspective. Most people are reasonable, right? Most people are reasonable. Some are, <laughs> but some are not. You know? uh, but what I just focus on is working with the reasonable people and the ones that 
you know, there, there, are, there are people that you'll always be proving to, proving to, proving to, and they're never gonna get it. So uh, I tend to leave them alone, have their own pity party, I call it over there, you know, knife, you know, saying that they can't make it work, it's never gonna work, you know, it's nonsense, property doesn't work, all of that, let them carry on. Because the energy that I wanna be spending is with people that are mm -hmm. understanding that they wanna move forward and they see the solutions, they see the facts, I show them postcodes, I show them in our trainings, for example, I show them postcodes, addresses, I show them, you know, bank statements. So there's absolute proof and I show them it's current. So you know, they're, they're the people that we want to focus our energy on and most people are reasonable, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna um, tell everyone a story. Uh, oh, the, the thing, one of the things I love about you, Cam, is um, every time we meet, you always surprise me somehow and it's the most random stuff. So I just recall um, one time we were speaking at an event and then you came in and you're looking a bit flustered and you're like, should I have just be mugged? And I think you know where I'm going with this. And it's like, should I have been mugged? And I was really concerned and thinking, oh, no, what's happened, what's happened? And he said, just been to the florist and I've just paid for a bunch of roses. I've just been mugged. <laughs> It's close to Valentine's Day, wasn't it? Or it might even have been on Valentine's Day. I can't remember, but that I, ju I just was not expecting that. So it did make me laugh a lot that day. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. Um, Cam, we've spoken a little bit about um, the Learn Whilst Investing program and allowing people to invest in live projects and learn along the way. Um, can you share your thoughts with regards to being able to offer that? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is actually a discussion that I've had with yourself. I've had discussions with other developers as well. And um, my friends that are developers, uh, they say to me, well, one guy, his name's Raj. He said, you know, he does developments, quite large developments. And he said, Cam, you're nuts. Why the heck are you spending all your time, you know, much of your time teaching these people because they're just going to be asking you question after question, silly questions, which, you know, is so annoying when you're making money from your development anyway. Why are you bothering with all of that? I ain't got the patience, he says. That's it. And he, and he says, I'm not friendly either. Said, all right, fair enough. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's what, one viewpoint. I mean, in a way, um, some of what he's saying is right. I mean, I suppose what I get, I get from that is that um, it is a lot of effort to actually train people properly. And that's the key. I'm not talking about, I mean, there's many trainers out there. You know, I'm not going to you know, mention names. All training is great. You always get something from it. But there are so many people that are just bamboozling people. Mm -hmm. You know, you show an amazing deal on how they're going to become a millionaire in the next 90 days and all of that kind of nonsense, you know? So, what? The, <laughs> forgive me for saying this, but I'm just being honest with you, right? So, the way we do this at Premier Property is, um, um, like I say, you know, we will share a project mm -hmm. um, where we system for training that um, you know we've developed over the last 12 years plus of mentoring and training people um, I've trained over a hundred thousand people I've mentored over a thousand people one-to-one mm -hmm. they get they're getting really good results um, and and um, you know they're saying good things about us behind our backs you know just honest recommendation why because we put a lot of effort into that I put a lot of personal effort into that so it's not really you know if you're gonna train someone properly it ain't that easy but at Premier Property, I don't know, there's something in me. I love, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, I love, I do love training people. I love sharing. And what's, a, you know, what's a better way than actually being a part of a live project and, you know, kind of being a part of that project in different stages, mm. but not dealing with the day to day and learning on that project. So, you know, this is something that we do at Premier Property. It's um, something that we've been doing over the last year. So it's fairly new. Um, but um, people are loving it. Um, you know, they, they like the fact that they can be part of something that's bigger, something that maybe for them by themselves would be a difficult entry level. And this makes it a very easy entry level for them to get into. And while they're doing that, they're getting honest learning so that they can decide to do a second project by themselves or they could carry on doing a second project with us at Premier Property. Um, it just opens up their eyes to you know, how the practicality of a project actually really works. And it also busts myths out there that, you know, that you become a millionaire in 30 days. No, you don't become a millionaire in 30 days in my experience. You know, in, in the people that are trained, that might take a year to 18 months to become financially free. Some people, some people have done it in three months. You know? mm -hmm. uh, 
some people take 24 months uh, and that's fine so your time frame is your time frame and um, so depending where you are in your property journey right now you know the learning you know learning as you uh, you know you're learning as how, how do you pronounce it how do you say it? your terminology learn learning as you, whilst investing learning uh, along the way yeah learning as you're investing is um, um is a great way of doing it and to be fair you don't really want to be doing it's something that you guys listening in are looking to do or you're wanting to do be aware of commitment so we don't offer this to people out there just um that we don't know yet this is for people that have got to know us who understand that we have a very honest environment they've they've been um, they've opened themselves up to that they've assessed us and they feel comfortable with us at that point i believe is the right time that you know we then offer the learn to invest um, scheme as you're calling it um, at that point so that might just be you know you come along on a one or two trainings or something uh, we get to know each other better um it's important that you do this i, I believe you know check people out you know what, what are they about you know what how are they how consistent are they um you know are you getting a gut feel of honesty uh you know is it practical all of that that'd be my suggestion anyway that's really important and actually with everyone um self-isolating and being online now is the real opportunity to increase um your knowledge base in terms of property the different strategies and all of that isn't it so um are you have you made your programs available um are you running webinars how's that working so yeah so we're we're doing trainings uh by webinar so self-isolating and and to be fair i'm not very technological but um i'll be getting uh, really massively lovely feedback from people on um, on how much uh, they value the trainings um which um is actually i'm very thankful for that you know I'm, I'm very thankful for technology so i never used to use it as much but we're using it right now and we try to we aim to create as, as much a live environment as possible and, and people have been loving it yeah and I, I, absolutely and i mean i do get a lot of uh, the comment of cam you're very real you it's very real very real uh, very specific a uh, lot of detail um you know actually you're actually giving us more than uh, expected so the nice the, the nice comments and it, it's nice um, to just get that sort of tick in the box that people are actually getting what you're aiming to get across to them um now if there's anybody here who wants to connect with us because of covid 19 i've been doing some um you know really crazy things where just we're offering webinars for absolutely free you know quality content um no fluff you know real 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 information if um, you're listening in and you know you're you are interested in joining us what you can do is just email me uh, my email is cam at premierproperty.co.uk so that's my personal email so that's cam that's with a k k-a-m at premierproperty.co.uk just email me and uh, just uh, just put in there something brief you know um, i'm interested in your next training and uh, i'll get my team to send send over to you the next current train that's coming up and um, as we're here because of the tuksha um, and davin you know they're a great couple uh, uh, we do like you guys a lot you know um, we're not going to charge you a penny for your current training that you're going to be doing that's oh promise. that's fantastic that's just yeah. brilliant thank you so much cam i really appreciate that and as a surprise I, I didn't know about that so before the call or before now so that's wonderful i really appreciate it um cam with regards to um where people are at today um whether they are new to property or have done maybe um done baby reverbs or small um conversions or whatever that looks like if they're looking to scale up to that next level um based upon where we currently are do you have like two or three tips that you could share with um the audience in terms of what they could be doing or where they should start or where they should start looking whatever it is hmm. so the people that i've trained out of the hundreds of thousands plus that i've trained so far what i find is they seems to be three types of people typically i mean of course everyone is unique but they sort of fall into one three of these camps so the first camp is that they're absolutely new to property and when they find us it's like oh my god there's so much information they love it so what i remind them is when they come out turn up at our trainings is that 
and when you turn up at training and you're new, you know, remember that I was where you are right now. Everybody starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're new and you've got someone who's actually willing to share with you how you can actually do this, I mean, is a real godsend. So, you know, there's no silly questions. You can relax, just taking what you want to, you know, taking the information. So that would be one tip for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the second tip would be, don't do it the way I did it back in 1989, out of desperation, where I took the action, but I didn't have the information. Now, I've explained my reasons that, you know, I couldn't find the people, um, but that is the longest route and that you will make the most mistakes and in mistakes in property, trust me, are very expensive. Mm. You know, some people will come back from that. Some people will not come back from that ever again financially. So remember that we're dealing with the highest priced asset in our lifetimes, yet at the same time, it's so easy to get it right. So my tip would be is, um, you know, don't go alone. You don't need to be alone. Um, do absolutely get the information. And then the third point would be is then take the action with the information. Because what's the point of really good information if you're not going to do anything with it, right? So that would be, that would be my, for the, for the new people. Then if you talk about the second camp is the intermediate people, um, or if we call them intermediate people. So people that have experience. So typically, you know, they've been in property for, you know, two to five years plus. They've got uh, one to four properties or around that region, depending on where they are. So, you know, they're, they're property savvy. They have some level of information. I would say the first thing is to build in a gentle slice of naivety, naivety like us. What do I mean by that? You know, keep the doors open, explore a little bit. Oh, what's this about? How can I, you know, not be closed? Because some people are really closed, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. No, yeah. you, don't. you don't know what you're doing. You think you know what you're doing. And then you're asking questions like, oh, how do you do that? How do you do this? Oh, how did you do with the estate agent? How did you get four deals done in, in COVID-19? Well, you clearly don't know then, do you? So, you know, being polite, you know, you'd say to them, you know, keep that door open. Keep exploring. Hmm. And you know, remember, um, like I do, that learning isn't about a course. Learning is lifelong. The more that you follow, the more you learn, the more you do, in my experience. Absolutely. So that's second camp. Then we have the third camp of people. Now, we typically get around 5 to 10% of these people that come into our training environments. And what we find there is, for them, they've already got the financial freedom. The money thing is done. You know? They, they are there, um, they're there because they love property. They're also there because they're bored. They're also there because they don't have a purpose in their life. So the tips, as you're asking, for people in that camp would be, well, okay, you know, if you've got financial freedom for you and your family, well, is that it? What are you going to do? Are you going to park yourself in a corner somewhere for the rest of your life just because of that? And if you're there, you know that four, four holidays a year, more than four holidays a year are, are too many holidays. You want to be back home, you know, you know, if your day isn't structured just because you've got enough money because you don't know what to do with your day, you know, um, then, you know, you, you need a purpose. So the key one for you would be then, if you're this person, is to find your purpose. Why have you created the money? What more can you do with the money? And think about all your experience that you've got. You know, how can you help others to help you to get that feeling of purpose? Mm. If I make yeah absolutely so um i'm gonna leave you with a final question so one of the things that i've spotted in this whole environment is how amazingly well the community has pulled together to help others where help is needed so and and that is just shining bright as far as i'm concerned and people are doing the the craziest things they're they're stepping up without question and it's just absolutely amazing now as you know i am a huge huge fan of um community and people helping people and i know your community is very important to you have you noticed how or has there been a change in terms of how they are helping each other that's the first part of this question and the second part is the property community as a whole um how do you think they can better serve each other 
You're quite right there. So um, it's when it hits the fan that you really find out what people are actually about. Yeah. And um, what I'm loving about our Premier Property community, uh, which by the way, you, you can all be part of, happy for you to be part of that. Um, I mentioned my email, haven't I? So just in case you didn't get it, it's cam at premierproperty.co.uk. The cam's with a K, K-A-M. Um, and um, you know, feel free to just email me and um, I'll, I'll definitely send you something where how you can become part of the community. And also uh, for our next training, uh, you can have that for absolutely free as a, as a thank you gift for being here. So what we're noticing with our community is that they are pulling together and um, what they're loving is the practical positivity that we bring. So we do a mastermind, for example, That's once good. a month for our Premier Property Inner Circle, which is our, our, my, my, my mentees. Now, when we did our, our last one, um, uh, people were just amazed by what I shared of the opportunities that we're finding right now. And all I did was share what we've been doing over the last two weeks. Um, because you just imagine, you know, you know, sometimes I need to remember this, you know, we're, we're surrounded by support. You know, our community is surrounded by support. They've got peers who are helping each other. They've got mentors uh, like me, you know, who are helping them. We've got other mentors within our Premier Property community who are helping each other. I've also got mentors, because there's always another level. So I've also got seven mentors, one of them is a billionaire in property um, and, and different aspects in business. You know, so there's, there's a stretch. So there's people that I can also call upon. And then there are people that can call upon me. And our community, what we're finding, what, what I was amazed and blown away by, by it was the fact that when we did our mastermind, it was like a relief. It was a relief of like, oh my God, there is so much opportunity right in front of me. And I didn't even think about it. Um, because, you know, not their fault, because for the rest of the time, they were listening to the media. They're listening to, you know, all that's going on in the news. And it's constantly we're bombarded with this, aren't they? So much negativity. So um, what I love about our community is that there's a real positive vibe. You know, in the, in the, in the property community, there's a, there is a real positive vibe. Um, people that self-select themselves to move forward. And, and people are genuinely doing the best they can to help each other. Um, mm -hmm. Or you'll find in your, or finding in the in the community of property itself, you know, estate agents. You know, estate agents are. Uh, I mentioned they're quite they're being quite flexible. They understand what is happening, so they they're, they're quite flexible with you. Um, this flexibility wasn't there three months ago. Your contractors are flexible. So you asked a question earlier: Are contractors working? Yes, mm -hmm. they are. You know, they they some of them are self isolating, but some of them are working and they are allowed to work in empty properties where they keep the the safe distance. So work is still going on. Uh, so contractors right now are listening to you. Three months ago, they were, everyone was busy. Now they've got time for you. So yeah. it's a great time. You know, there's a, there's a whole team in everyone, let, letting agents, uh, even your solicitors, they're working from home. You know, they, they, they've got a bit more time to have a conversation um, with you. You know, there's, 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 there's all of this. So the whole community seems to be re you know, really uh, being um, in one way, doesn't feel like it, but they, they are actually being helped, can't they, by COVID-19 um, in this way, being, being, being pushed into this community of you know, self-help and helping each other. That's what we're finding anyway. Yeah, that is so true. I'm, I'm absolutely loving that piece of it. Um, so there are huge, huge challenges. You know, I'm the forever optimist. And so I'm always looking for what good is coming out of it. And the community piece is incredibly strong, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. Because we're getting the same. Um, people in the simple community as well are helping each other um, where they can. And we're getting tons and tons of messages, which is a wonderful, wonderful place to be. So um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time and your insight. And I know it's going to be of value to um, the people that we push the video out to. So thank you so much. And I will put your email address um, at the bottom of the video anyway. I shall point people to um, Premier Property. So if they then want to find out more, they can get in touch with you. Thank you for having me, Atuksha. I hope uh, the content was useful. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you.